Hi, I'm Meg Michelson. Thank you for joining me at Soul Speak. You're about to listen to another episode. And in these episodes, my goal is to help you understand the connection between your earth body and your soul body so you may begin to live with more ease and less stress. Thank you for joining me, and I really hope you enjoy this episode. Welcome back to episode two of Soul Speak. Thanks again for joining me. Today, we're going to talk about relationships, and the focus is on the soul perspective of relationships. In my belief, relationships with self and others are the most important reason we are here on earth. They can bring us great joy, and they can also bring us the most pain. Sometimes we can get stuck in the feelings of hurt by another and think only of our own pain and not how we are learning from the experience or how we could be learning. We forget to stand in the other person's shoes. We're not thinking of how they might be feeling. And we're not reflecting on what might be going on for them that's causing them to behave the way they're behaving. Why did they behave that way? What's going on in their internal world? The longer we choose to take things too personally or focus just on our own pain, the further the division becomes between us, between us and our higher power, us and our, our, all the others in our lives, and including animals, how we can pull away from that relationship. What if we choose instead to look at relationships a different way through the lens of the soul? And what does that mean? Well, when we have an issue with another person, a situation, what's the lesson my soul is wanting me to learn? I try every day to connect in that way. Of course, I'm not perfect, never going to be. But I really try when I'm feeling pain or stress or hurt or taking on someone else's stuff to pull back and say, okay, wait a minute, what's my learning here? Why is it causing this in me? When we start to do that, when we look at what is my learning in this, is this a theme? Is this something I've been overplaying in my life? What is underneath the feelings I'm having? Then things start to shift. Then we can tap into the wisdom that is within us and also beyond us from our higher self. One of my beliefs is that we choose our people here on earth prior to coming to earth. You know, when you think of all the pain that we encounter from some of those people, some of that pain could have been very horrific, extremely excruciating. So I'm not at all downplaying that pain. But why would we choose that? Why would we choose those people that are apt to cause us more pain than others? Why would we set ourselves up for pain? Because we grow through experience. And humans tend to be dense. Our consciousness is dense. And we tend to go through pain to grow more than joy to grow. Now, when we think back of our growth, it's almost always through pain experiences. Think of how often we focus on the pain in our bodies and the insufficiencies in a relationship, how much we're hurt by somebody instead of the positive aspects. And then we get stuck on that. Or we know of someone else's pain or trouble, and we get stuck on that, the worry of that. Why is that? Because as humans, we tend to put more attention towards lack until, of course, we choose to become more mindful. And even as we evolve and become more mindful, it still can be a challenge. Doesn't mean it can't be overcome, though. So we just never want to, never want to expect perfection. Another of my beliefs, when we look back after we have left this earth or at the end of our days, we will remember what we overcame. And we will also reflect on whether or not we allowed ourselves to feel empowered or disempowered by others. Did we use our energy to disempower or empower somebody else? That's what every relationship comes down to. And it starts early on and it continues until we die. We might feel so angry about what someone did to us or someone did not do something they didn't do for us. And then we feel bad. We want to feel better. So we sometimes feel better by using um, tools or behaviors that are not good for us. We might say something we regret. We might slam drawers. We might do things that are mean. 
or we hurt our body by holding too much in. Or if we come home from work and we've had a bad day at work, maybe we didn't feel like we could use our voice at work. So we come home and we take it out on those people we love the most. Maybe we'd yell at our child or our partner or our dog. No, whatever it is, if we're not mindful of how we are using that energy of empowerment versus disempowerment, we can take it out on ourselves and on others which is not why we're here on earth. We're here on earth to learn how not to do that. But it's trial and error. So this goes back to our earliest memories. Think back to your earliest childhood memories with family. Maybe the not so pleasant ones. What family members caused you to feel more diminished, a little more small, a little more defensive, a little more intimidated? Did that end for you or do you still feel that way with that person and in that relationship? How are family holidays, family parties? Do you dread them? Do you get nervous around them? Or do they bring you peace and comfort? Why? I want you to look at the family members that caused you those feelings to arise. And now take that pattern and bring it into your current life. We all have, on some level, childhood wounding. And when we're not being mindful of it, we definitely can bring it into our current circumstances, regardless of how many years we've been on Earth. Are there any people that remind you of how you feel from that older relationship, a sibling, a parent? There are. There always will be. That's how it works on a soul level, because there's still growth in that relationship. And for whatever reason, we have not yet gotten to the place of equal empowerment through that type of relationship. So our higher self, our higher power gives us another opportunity. So that same theme is going to keep repeating itself until we find our way to equality, feel empowered in a healthy way. And that's with every being in every situation. All of us have those struggles. We don't necessarily have to go back and solve it with that childhood person. We can sometimes. We don't have to. We have to solve it within. So when we go back and encounter that person, if we do, if they're still living, or someone that's similar, now we feel empowered. We no longer feel small. A woman I know, and I can actually say many of the clients I work with have an issue with one of their parents. And almost always, they've married a person that's just like that parent they struggled with. One of my um, clients, a lovely, strong woman, really struggles with her husband. He's a, a strong personality. She is too, but he's stronger than her. And he'll do it through criticism and a little intimidation. And, and that makes her feel small. Why? Because it's bringing her back to her childhood memories with her mom. And she can be strong in lots of situations, but in that situation, she's still struggling with that pattern repeating itself, with feeling equal. And that's what we want to be mindful of. What is this reminding me of? And what is my soul here to learn from it? You know, we contracted this, in my belief, to have this dis-ease to overcome and gain strength from. We do not have to make the other person the bad person. We just want to say, ah, this is an opportunity for me to grow. This is my ability and an opportunity to grow. I don't need to disempower another person to feel my power. And I don't need to allow someone else to disempower me. What is my piece in that? What is that client of mine to learn? And how is that helping or hurting our body? Because remember the last episode, everything we're doing is helping or hurting our body. When we have this relationship that is more powerful than us, when someone can be intimidating to us and we're an adult, our jaw gets tight. Our throat gets a little hoarse. You know, I'm I'm noticing this morning because, of course, I'm still nervous. This is just episode two. Um, I'm having a little catch in my throat today and I'm not surprised because that's the area that I'm supposed to let go and surrender and just let things happen. 
but we don't always live that way, do we? So we want to ask ourselves when we're in any relationship where we feel less than, where we feel intimidated, am I using my voice? Am I feeling equal? Or am I making my decisions and feeling small because that person is going to criticize me or judge me or yell at me? They might in the moment, but the more we stop allowing it, the less they can get the result they're looking for. So they feel big because they're just doing it because they're feeling small. You know, maybe they had a hard time at work and they didn't use their voice and they come home and now they do it to their partner or their child or their dog. And we want to recognize that. So we're not taking it so personally so we can get our power back. So we can say, wait a minute, spirit, connect with me now so I can feel more empowered and I can allow that person to be what they want to be, but not take it on and not ingest it. Our part is to learn to stay equal, to not let someone that is struggling bully us. That person is her partner, and she's no longer a child. But that personality is causing her to go back to her childhood wounding, same way she felt with her mom. And we marry that because that's the lesson we are here to learn so we can get stronger. It all comes back to being stronger and equal. His belittling of her can be so demeaning if she lets it impact her that way. If she chooses to remember that under his critical behavior is an unhappy wounded child, that she can be in compassion for his imbalance, she can be in compassion for the way he chooses to treat others, because that does not feel good inside somebody once they wake up. And that's the learning. And it's not an easy task. It's not. It's a soul growth. It causes pain. It causes angst. It causes us to really shrink back when we're not careful, when we're not being mindful. And it is a lifetime journey. So we want to be kind to ourselves through that and not force ourselves, but breathe and be courageous. How can we start? How can we start to change that pattern of letting someone else make us feel smaller? With an inhale and an exhale. I'll say this every episode, inhales and exhales bring us back to our center. And then simple, calm words. Please stop speaking to me that way. Or, you know, that tone is really hurtful to me. We want to be careful that we don't attack back because that really doesn't help. We're trying to gather ourselves in. So we pull ourselves in with our breath and speaking. The way you're hurting, the way you're speaking is hurting me or just, ouch, that hurts. Our peace, regardless of the relationship, is to learn to feel equal. So we want to pull ourselves out of the past and into present time. My name is blank. It's 2023 and I'm blank years old. When we're having a hard situation, my name is Meg. It's 2023 and I'm 59 years old. And feel that in the lower body, feel it in the feet, feel it in the legs, feel it in the glutes, feel it in the lower back, feel it in the belly, feel it in the mid back, all the way up to the heart, because that's where we get into our present time. And we also want to remember, I'm an adult. I'm not a child anymore. When I was a child, I had less choice. But now I'm an adult and I can make my own choices without worrying about how someone will judge me, my family of origin, my partner, my boss. I'm doing the things that are best for me. And when I'm doing the things that are best for me and letting my voice be heard in respectful ways, respect is huge because that's respectful to self too, then I'm letting my light shine in healthy ways. And I'm better serving the people around me because it's all within that balance now of giving and receiving. That's not selfish because we're in balance. My belief, one of them, at the end of the day, when we leave this earth, one of the most important lessons will be 
Did we allow ourselves to feel empowered? Did we allow ourselves and work with our energy to feel equal to others? That is key because every day we are given opportunities to feel disempowered. And that's a choice how we're going to react to that. We also want to make sure we're not using our power to make someone else feel small because we're feeling stress. Because that's just as detrimental to our spirit as letting someone disempower us. Do we let ourselves open our heart and realize that we all came in to be equal, that we all came in with greatness, that we all came in with enough? There's enough for all of us. So when we have siblings, parents, friends, coworkers, bosses, even children can disempower us. That's up to us. What's that theme? And as we talked about last week, over time, this relationship can affect our physical body. Remember in the last episode with that man that held that anger towards his brother? He was now in his 50s and he held that anger and pain since he was in his teens. It affected his physical body because he was having pain in his heart. Doctors couldn't diagnose it. But over time, it will lead to something. If we're not careful, because that's what we're doing. We're hurting ourselves and our spirit is trying to get our attention. Our body and our spirit are co-connecting, co-creating. That's why we get these warnings. That's why we get pain. It's that wake up call. So we have chances to heal it before it becomes a bigger physical manifestation. How else do we get in the way of our soul connection? By focusing on fixing others, we do that in relationships all the time. I'm so um, guilty of that in my history and still some days in my present, of course, because I'm a mom and and I'm a healer. If you're a feeler, if you're a heart centered person, if you're a fixer, this is going to be a bigger challenge for you. If you're an empath, it's a really big challenge. We all know an empath. We have an empath in our home or we are an empath. Empaths have a pretty challenging journey and that's going to be um, more episodes to go. But um, I want to bring it up now because it is such an important part of relationships through a soul perspective. As an empath or being an empathic person, we can feel the pain of others and we want to fix the pain of others. Why? Because it's so hard to feel that pain. We just want to get rid of it. And sometimes when someone's talking to us, and and this is my history, if one of my kids was talking to me and they are in that angst, I want to fix it right then or just have them stop talking because it feels so uncomfortable within me because I'm feeling what they're feeling. And of course, that's not a healthy pattern that I was carrying and sometimes still do. It causes us internal pain. So we either fix it, come up with a million solutions right there or interrupt them so we can get that solution going. Or we run from those people that have pain that is causing us pain. We stay away from people. We keep our heart closed. Okay, I got to go now. I can't hear you, but I'll talk to you later. And it is because we cannot handle that internal pain we're feeling from the pain of another. And um, we get to work through that. And we're meant to work through that on a soul level. What I can do instead of feeling the angst and letting it build up in my chest and go to my throat, and then this gets really tight, my jaw, what I can do instead is to turn it over to my higher power, open up that divine wisdom channel, and just stay in that place of peace. Um, One of my kids, she was having some tension in Minnesota, and she called me, and, and I just visited her. And she called me on the phone as I'm driving home and I could feel her tension. And I decided to practice something different. Instead of trying to interrupt her and give her a solution, I decided to just step back and create what I call a sacred container and let her speak. And I sent a signal to my guides and her guides Okay, let her come up with her own solution. I'm just going to create a circle of love around this and know she is strong enough to figure this out herself. She asks for my opinion. I'll find one from my higher power, not from overthinking. However, if she doesn't, I'm just going to imagine that beautiful sacred energy and let her figure it out. 
And that worked beautifully because when we finished the call, I did not solve it for her. She was calmer. And the end of the day, she told me how it worked out and it was great. I don't need to be the problem solver. We don't need to be the fixers. We do that because deep within us, no matter who we are, there lives a feeling of wanting to be lovable, of wanting to be, be the kind of person that others want us to be. How often does that get in the way of expressing ourselves, of being authentic? How often do we change our answers or reactions to please others? That's where we're getting in the way of our higher self, of that beautiful, magical, spiritual energy that comes through and gives us the answers we need. We are always loved. We love ourselves, And if we don't, we can learn. And we're always loved by this beautiful universe. We just want to tap into it and not always be looking for external ways to feel loved. How often do we want to make ourselves what the other person wants so we feel that? Fixing their problems, rescuing, needing to be needed. Does that give us the energy that helps us? Or is that an ego-driven way to live? And then we are again practicing that external gratification instead of the internal sense of love. So... What's a sacred container? I want to talk about that in a minute. A sacred container is imagining that place of peace within us. We all have it. Imagining that place of peace, going to that place of peace. So we do it with breath and going to our heart, going to our chest, or going down to our third chakra, our upper belly. Breathing in there, feeling the breath, expand the physical body. We want the physical body connection with the breath. Not thinking it, but actually doing it and feeling it. And then sending that out, that peace, that calm, that sense of, ah, and we don't have to do anything, but send that energy out around us. And that's where the magic can take hold. Remember when we're hurting in relationships and we feel that angst in our chest, the weakness in the upper back, scapula, our jaw, feeling sick in our stomach because someone just criticized us and it really hurt. We don't need to stay there. We can create that sacred container for ourselves. How else do we get in the way of that relationship to others and our own greatness by blaming other people for wherever our life is? Think about relationships differently. Instead of not moving forward because that person hurt me or that person hurt me or I don't have time or that person didn't say yes. I'm not happy because that person's not treating me well. Or I used to say when, my, um, when I was married and my husband traveled, I couldn't fulfill my destiny because he was gone all the time. Well, I could certainly have changed that somehow, but I used that as an excuse to get in the way. And then that got in the way of my relationship to my higher power, the relationship to my own divine light and the relationship with my former spouse. When I started doing things that are good for me and taking care of myself and not giving, 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 then I cannot blame others anymore. And we have to go into the reality and, and really look in the mirror. One of the women I'm working with, she's in her 30s, lovely woman. They're all lovely. She um, was really struggling with this relationship and she had a great view. She was not wearing her glasses and her eye doctor told her, her first eye doctor said, um, because she was not comfortable putting the contacts in, he said, well, and just don't put the contacts in. And instead of wearing her glasses, she just couldn't see. She was struggling with a lot of things in her life and complaining was one of them. She recently told me, I went to another eye doctor and that eye doctor said, maybe just try putting the contacts in. And she did. And she realized it's not so bad. And she took that a step further, which I just love. And she said, I actually can see now. And 
I'm starting to do things that are better for me. Just doing that one risk, taking that one risk and trying. Now I'm seeing my relationship with my boyfriend differently. I'm not blaming him for so much. I'm actually appreciating him more because I took a risk. I wore the contacts. I did something that was good for me. And now I can see with better vision in a whole lot of ways. I'm going to tell you a story about when I was camping, when I was camping and I was with my kids when I had three and I have now five kids. And so three were um, boom, boom, boom. And we were camping and I was going through a period where I was feeling hurt and neglected by my, um, my husband. And I had pain in my left scapula so bad when we were camping that I ended up having to find a doctor. We were somewhere in Montana, found a um, chiropractor to help me. It really didn't diminish the pain having the adjustment. Why? Because the muscle was so tight, but I was not getting the emotional connection to what was going on. I wish I knew then what I knew now, but of course I didn't. So it doesn't matter. But I was holding that pain in my left scapula because I was getting my love feelings from someone that wasn't giving them to me. And I had these three kids there that I, I could have that day or how many days we were there connected with and received love and gave joy and, and um, got joy back from the trees and the kids. And instead of focusing on the one person that wasn't giving me love. So blaming that one person inadvertently for not feeling loved instead of connecting to all the love and joy that was around me. But look at what it did. It hurt my back. I got a lot of pain in that scapula. So I chose to feel lack. I chose to be so stuck on not feeling love from one person that it affected my physical body. Glad I learned that lesson. I'm glad I know what I know now. We want to be careful that we don't allow the pain to become greater than the joy and the love that is around us. We want to be careful that we don't blame external circumstances for what's going on in our internal world, for what's going on with the risks that we are taking or not taking. Because when we do, we can get too busy doing things that are escapism, like getting too involved in other people's lives, staying busy, cleaning the house. You know, think of all the ways we escape our greatness, our connection and our relationship to our higher self, drinking, judging, gossiping, working all the time. And instead of escaping, we can stop and allow ourselves to say, what's the truth here? What's the truth? All right, higher self. All right, divine wisdom. Show me what's the truth. Tell me. Our body's always going to tell us, remember, because we're going to feel a physical grip somewhere. Physical dis-ease. Go to that area. Ask what it's about. And what am I to learn in this relationship with this person that's causing me this distress? We can also get in the way of our connection to spirit by being too, too strong and rigid with others. It's so important to learn there's a difference between being a victim and being vulnerable. And when we've been hurt in the past, we can hold our heart a little too tight. We can get in the way of that connection to that person and not let the love in. What if we let others help us? What if we started to speak what we wanted in a relationship? But first we have to know that. First we have to start speaking honestly to ourselves. And asking our connection to our higher self, how are we getting in our own way? We don't want to be victimized anymore or hurt anymore. So we stay too strong. And then our body takes the hit. Our jaw feels tight and resentful because we're doing so much. But it is safer to feel vulnerable. We just have to mindfully get to that place. Because sometimes it feels safer to feel rigid, but it really doesn't because it hurts our physical body and then we feel more alone. We don't let people care for us. Victim is not the same as vulnerability. They're two different things. 
A woman I, I worked with used to be really critical to her partner. She's very smart. And she used her intelligence to feel better about herself, to talk about all the things that she knows, and to tell her husband sometimes by her actions and her words that she was smarter than him. She let him know that. Why did she do that? Because he wasn't providing the emotional connection she so desired. And so instead of feeling small, she went to the other part. She still felt small, of course. It's just a mask. But she went into that place of sometimes saying things that were mean or <clears throat> um, causing him to feel not as smart as she was, causing him to feel stupid. Whether or not he felt that way, it's up to him. But she would try. And on some level, we know we're doing that. And on some level, we get in our own way. But she really just truly wanted an emotional connection with him. We can be so ignorant to our own behaviors. But if we give ourselves that time to stop when we're doing it, wait a minute, why am I doing that? What was that about? Do I have to attack that person to feel better? Or do I want to find ways to love myself? And if I'm not going to get the love from that person, where can I get it from instead? I can connect to trees. I can connect to a passion. I can paint. I can find a way to give and receive to my children or to animals or to people in the greater world. But we want to be careful that we're not using these escapism tendencies to cover our own pain. Because it does. It can cause rigidity, which then leads to rigidity in the body. If I am needed, then I'm wanted. If I am better than, I'm wanted. Is that true? Am I weak if I need? Am I weak if I ask for what I want? So pay attention to all those feelings in your body and ask those questions. What are you trying to tell me, spirit? Connect the body and our soul. Connect that higher wisdom. What's my learning? Instead of taking someone down or letting them take me down, we can pause before we react. It hurts me when you speak that way to me. Or do I want to use my voice right now? Or do I want to just be the gentle giant, non-react, and come up with a healthier solution? So right now, if you're willing, I want you to take a few breaths. Close your eyes or keep them open. Breathe through the nose, down the throat, down the spine, because the spine, the bones, they carry our history. Bring up a person you're having challenges with, a family member, a boss, a child. Notice where you're feeling it in the body. You might have to bring up a memory <clears throat> so you can feel it. Now ask, what is that person going through? Get out of the mind and into the body. Or put them on an imaginary screen in front of you. What is that person going through that's causing them to treat others the way they're treating them? Why is that person being a bully? Why am I allowing them to treat me that way? Remember, they're holding childhood wounding or you're holding childhood wounding. Well, both, right? And they're throwing their poison arrow at you because in that moment, when they pull back that arrow and their arrow goes in the air, they feel a minute of relief. We do that same thing when we throw our poison arrow at somebody. We feel a moment of relief, but it doesn't last and it does more damage. We don't have to shoot the poison arrow, and we don't have to let the poison arrow penetrate our field. We can see it coming, and we can inhale, exhale, and pull ourselves into our center. Let it fall to the floor. Breathe into my belly, my whole belly, and then open the wisdom channel. 
we can learn to have a healthier connection with self. When I opened Well House, the mission is and was learn to connect healthfully with self so we can connect healthfully with others. We want to first learn how to connect with our higher self and really learn that relationship with our soul from a healthy way. So then we can do that with other people. Paying attention to the body because the body is always going to be talking to us. And the healthier we become internally, the healthier those around us become. Why? Because those that are not so healthy, that starts to diminish. Those relationships might fall away or they become less important. And we start bringing in people that are healthier. We let go of the pain with an exhale and we invite spirit and the wisdom in with an inhale. And just like when we throw a pebble in the pond, that ripple goes outward. When we treat ourselves with more kindness, more respect, that ripple goes outward. We treat other people with more kindness and respect. Our relationship grows to self and healthier relationship grows to others. Something I want to leave you with. Learn to live the golden rule with yourself and with others. So the golden rule, treat others how we want to be treated. Take that a step further. Treat self how we want others to treat us. Treat ourself as well as we want others to treat us. If we treat ourselves poorly, we're inviting others to treat us poorly. If we treat ourselves well, authentically well, we're inviting other people to treat us well. Each person in our life is mirroring us somehow. Look in the mirror. Smile. How do I want to treat myself today? How do I want other people to treat me? What legacy do I want to leave here on earth? And smile. Every day throughout the day, catch yourself smiling and do it more, 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 more. Smile often. Funny story about that from college. This couple that I knew, um, they, they fought a lot, but one day he was... <laughs> driving to campus on his bike on his, and he was smiling big and she saw him and she said, wow, did you just eat Oreos? Instead of saying, oh my gosh, you're so happy. You're smiling. She said, were you just eating Oreos? Cause you have black things in your teeth. And he said, no, he had little bugs in his teeth. And that would have been a, a, that's such a funny story to me, but that would have been a great time for her to say, what are you so happy about? But she decided to go right for the jab. They ended up divorced. But live by the golden rule. Treat other people how you want to be treated. Treat yourself how you want others to treat you. Smile at yourself every day. When you see your reflection in the mirror, smile. When you see your reflection in a window, smile. When you don't, smile. Let yourself think of funny stories like that story that just popped in with that man with bugs in his teeth. Makes me smile. Thank you for joining me, and please take time to breathe and smile today and every day this week. We'll see you next time. Hey, listeners, thanks again for joining me. If you want to learn more about me, services I offer, who I am, please check out my website, megmichelson.com. Also there, you can join my newsletter. I do a, the best job I can to send it out monthly, no guarantees. Follow me on Instagram and YouTube. Thanks again for coming. I'll see you next time.